Welcome to Labinus.com. Just like any other server you deal with, having a regular backup of your server is very essential in case you need to revert the configuration or perform disaster recovery due to either hardware or software failure. ICE is certainly no exception. In this video, we will demonstrate how to perform server backup and restore on Cisco ICE, and here is our lab setup. So here we have a Cisco ICE running version 1.1.2 at the IP of .102 that we will be performing a backup and restore on. And the backup file will be stored on an FTP server running on our domain controller at the IP.40. So the first thing that you need to do before you can perform backup is to create a software repository. And to do that, you need to go to Administration, Maintenance, and right here, Repository. And you click Add but give it a name since we know that we're going to be using FTP for our backup then we're just going to put FTP in the name and here right here protocol you have all sorts of options here FTP, SFTP, TFTP, and NFS which are a protocol that suits your needs so you can just pick one out for us we're going to do FTP our path we're going to store it at root folder or directory and server name do name or IP, you're going to specify by IP. So 172.16.42.40. Uh, With username, we've created an account. We have a, just to show you on the server, we have a FileZilla server running. With an account of a username Cisco and the password Cisco that's pointing to or having a home directory folder. Ice backup that's located on our desktop. So username password, you can show a password right here. We have Cisco Cisco setup. We go click submit. Now to test out the and make sure our FTP server is functioning, what we can do is to SSH to ICE at 172.16.32.102. Then you lock in, and you, then you can do show repository, and the name that we gave, which is LM Backup FTP, enter. So as soon as you hit enter, you can see the activity lock on an FTP server, as far as there's a lock-in activity with the user Cisco, and we were trying to list the directory on the server and right now we do not have anything so it came back reporting as empty. Okay so now we know that our software repository is ready to go. We're going to go ahead and start our backup configuration. So the two types of backup that you can do with eyes one is called or on administration node and that's just the configuration and OS backup. And the second type of backup is on the monitoring node, and that's for the reporting backup. So let's start our config on the configuration backup. Here you have the option of uh, full backup on demand, a schedule backup. So let's do a schedule backup first. We'll click Add. Here we'll give it a name. And whatever name you provide here will also be a part of the file of the backup file name. So right here, repository is already there. And here's just an option or checkbox if you want to whether or not you want to include the OS system data on the back in the backup file or not. So at this point we want to exclude it. So we just want to config themselves and not the OS. Whether or not you want to do repeating the backup. Encryption key. This is will be uh, you need an encryption key when you're trying to do the restore. So, and you also need to make sure it meets the password complexity. So if you just go ahead and do Cisco, that would not meet the password complexity. So we need to give it something else. Let me make sure I get this right. So otherwise, when it comes to the restore portion of it, you would not be able to do that. So, okay. So now. You have to specify the time of day that you want the backup to run. And we can just do 
let's see. We'll just do a midnight, for example. So every midnight, we want the config uh, ice config to be backed up, and you can do. You have a choice of the frequency. So just keep it simple. We we'll do daily. Your submit. Okay, so that is ready to go. Next, we're gonna configure a schedule backup for our monitoring node, which is the reporting part of it. First thing it asks you is the encryption key. We're just going to use the same encryption key here. Again, choose the data repository. Let's do uh, 10 p.m. at night for incremental backup. So one um, difference between the uh, monitoring or uh, reporting backup and the configuration backup is you have capability to do incremental backup with the reporting. So we want to do, let's say, incremental daily at 10 p.m. And then we also want to do a full backup weekly at 1 a.m. And don't forget to switch that on. Okay, so that is set up. Next, you can look at the purging as far as how long or, uh, you want to keep your reporting or store the reporting before it gets deleted. It can be either 80% of your available disk space or uh, you can specify the, the time period, which default is three months. So we'll leave that as default. Okay, we'll tell it which data repository you want to, uh, data, to, to make sure data purging is active on. Restore, we'll deal with that later once we've uh, finished with the backup. So we'll come back and take a look at that. So instead of uh, waiting for the schedule backup to start, we're actually going to go ahead and perform a full backup on demand. So this is a good idea when you, for example, you first, when you have a ICE first install and you're done with the configuration, it's always a good idea to take a full backup. Uh, of your config. So for the backup name, let's call it a uh, manual config. Repository again points our FTP server, and we would like to exclude the OS data, and we have to give it the encryption key. Okay, so we go ahead and click. Back up now, actually, before I click OK, I want to clear out the lock on the FTP server so we know exactly when it happens. Okay, so sometimes once you click OK, it doesn't seem to be anything that's happening, but what's happening in the background is that the backup has already been initiated. So you can go back. Let's see. There you go. If you're trying to run the backup one more time, it's, it would prompts you that the backup or restore is already in progress. So although there's not really a, a progress bar for this, but if you get this error message, you know that the backup is currently currently running. And sometimes it can takes several minutes, up to you know tens and twenty minutes for the for you to actually see a file pushed to the server. So I've tried to run this a couple of times, and I kind of know that it's an average of about 20 minutes. So instead of keeping you guys waiting, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and then I'll return once the backup has been completed. I'll be right back. Okay, so it looks like our on-demand backup has completed. So if you look at our uh, FTP log here, the time that we started and by the time it's finished took about 23 minutes. So let's take a look at what we have as far as in the folder. So here, here's the file with the name of manual config as part of the name as we specify in the on-demand backup uh, page. So now that we have a backup file, what I'm going to do next is to revert to um, a snapshot of the v uh, I server to when it was a fresh install so we can try to perform a restore. So here I'm going to go to Snapshot, Snapshot Manager. We're going to go back all the way to default. Click Yes. Close. 
Now it's reverting to the previous snapshot. So as soon as that's completed, we're going to go ahead and restart. So reset. OK. And once it's back up, we'll try to perform a restore. So I'm going to pause the video for a second. I'll be right back. Okay, so now that we have our iServer reverted back to when it was a fresh install, just to show you real quick here, under policy authentication, you see all of our policies are now gone. So in order to proceed with the restore, the first thing you need to do is to go back and recreate the repository. So again, same step as, as, uh, as before. Create repository, add, we call it LM Backup FTP. We were using FTP server, IP 32.40, username, password, Cisco. Okay, so now that's added, we're going to go back and SSH to ICE to access the command line. Okay, make sure our FTP server is still running. Let's clear that. Do a show repository. I'll then back up FTP. Okay, we can see our backup file in there. So now we are going to initiate a restore. And by the way, to in order to perform a configuration restore, that has to be done through the command line, unlike the, the reporting restore, which can be done right here with the data restore. Okay, so now with the restore, the backup file name is this. Repository, LM, backup, FTP. Let me clear the background one more time. And we have to tell it that we are only dealing with application and not the OS. Let's say right here, application only restore excludes OS system data. And that's what we did. Not application is ICE. And encryption key that we used was Cisco 123. Actually, did we miss something here? Oh, we need to specify as a plain text. There you go, Cisco123. It said restore may require a restart of the application services, and we said yes, that's okay. And immediately you see that the ICE is trying to access the FTP server and download it, the backup file. Okay, you can see that now the, the restore is currently running. And again, that's going to take quite some time. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video again and return when once it's uh, completed. Okay, so at this point, ICE has completed the restore. So let's take a quick look at the output on the command line. So right here, this is where we last left first before we uh, pause the video, init uh, initiating restore, and then ICE application restores in progress and they went through stopping and restarting the services and right now we're back up and running again so to check and see if a restore is, is whether or not a restore has succeeded let's see what we've got on there for example policies okay so we've got our policies rules that we configured in the previous video back already Let's see what else we have or already had configured. Uh, what about user database? Okay, so the user database has already been restored as well. So at this point, we're back where we were. We were taking the backup of the config. Okay, so that wraps up our video on the backup and restore on Cisco ICE.
Thank you for watching Lapinus.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.